Good morning. Here we are. First run of Dopey. Let's get to it before it gets too hot. We're going in! <laughs> Three, two, one, go! run number one 45 minutes um, it's actually pretty nice out here my car I think was reading 69 and there's a nice breeze but you know it's funny I went back and found my uh, first training video from Goofy um, and uh, doing the same thing now that I did then I'm running by heart rate so I'm trying to keep my heart rate in the green so walk a little bit, jog a little bit, you know. But um, I found it funny that uh, Goofy's first week was filled with drama. We had a little bit of drama already this week. We'll talk about that in a minute. So just like with Goofy, because the Goofy and Dopey Galloway plans are actually pretty much the same until the last two simulation weekends, I think, two or three. But um, my first week on the women's running marathon plan is just not workouts like tempo or interval or anything. It's just two easy runs for the first week, which is why I'm doing heart rate. Um, as far as the drama... You know, when I was training for Goofy that first week, it was also when my little Sadie was getting spayed and husband was traveling for work. And it was a little anxiety driven that first week. Well, Sunday evening, we had to put down the last of our original four cats. He had been not looking well. And when I really started watching closely, I, could, I realized that he wasn't eating, and I knew he obviously wouldn't last very long by eating anything. So, my husband took him to the emergency vet on Sunday evening, and they found that he had a large mass in his abdomen pushing on his liver. So, it's, you know, the emergency vets, that they're, you know, every little bit that they do costs money, but we're going to assume that he probably had cancer. So, we put him down, which is really sad. I was not in a mood to do anything yesterday. Yesterday being Monday. Um, I did a little walk with Sadie on the treadmill. That's about all I could muster while I just allowed myself to feel sad for a bit. But now we're out here. We're doing it. Well, that was uh, going pretty well until I twisted my bat ankle again. <sighs> Got 37 minutes, so because I'm a rule follower, I'm doing my last eight minutes just walking. Um, but it took me a second, <laughs> that, that hurt pretty good, but I'm walking it off, as they say. <laughs> but uh, guess we're gonna be adding um, some TheraBand into our strength training. <sighs> Stupid ankle. I think I just stepped on a rock because I'm on this gravel thing here, so great! Hello! Happy Thursday! Happy 4th of July! Um, as you could tell from those clips, I was running out of my favorite place to run. There was a ton of people, so I didn't do any talking uh, during that run, but I was able to actually complete technically 44 minutes, 50 seconds, but I hit four miles, so I went ahead and stopped. 
because I literally had to pee that entire run. So now I'm driving very quickly back to my house. Um, but that went well. Uh, you know, it's, I'm, like I said, I'm running by heart rate and it's very warm and humid here. So um, I end up, you know, walking more than really I need to just to keep what is supposed to be an easy run, an easy run. When I start getting into the intervals and the tempos starting, you know, next week where the plan actually calls for some sort of workout, I won't be watching my heart rate. But if it calls for a quote unquote easy run, easy 45 minutes, I'll do it by heart rate until it cools down. But it was beautiful out there. Uh, besides the warm and humid, it was, you know, I love running there. It's so pretty with the mountains and the water and the lake. But, so like I said, I'm heading home now, and along with today being 4th of July, it is also my Sadie's birthday. So I'm gonna just enjoy the fact that she's such a great dog, and I'll probably let her go swimming. And, oh, also I am planning, if it works out, uh, this has nothing to do with Sadie's birthday, but I'm finally going to see Inside Out too, and I'm so excited. It's Saturday, first long run of week one, which is just three miles, and uh, as you saw, I kind of chickened out with running outside, but I had a good reason, and then I had a bad reason. Bad reason being I um, just didn't want to run outside in the humidity. <laughs> and the good reason is, is that I was, if I had run, it would have been on my street, and there's still kind of uneven gravel things that I'm trying to avoid for maybe another week or so with my ankle that I twisted, you know, first, first OP run. So, um, it's feeling better, but I can still feel it. So I'm going to wait a couple more runs before I go back on any sort of trail or uneven situation. Um, so got everything done week one, did all my strength training, um, been doing my TheraBand been icing um, and everything, you know, when is week one probably would. Week one is, seems pretty low, but I, you know, just keep reminding myself that the longer miles are coming. So, our, uh, our first, um, and I actually had forgotten this until I went to actually read the first chapter, but he actually has them labeled as miles in uh, Run the Mile You're In, of course. So, um, mile one or chapter one, uh, the theme is vision. Um, and he basically um, begins with how he got into running, which granted he was, let's see, where, how old was he? He was 13 years old when um, he discovered um, that he liked running, but I kind of relate to that as an adult where I, you know, up to the point that I actually started running, didn't have any desire to do it. <laughs> um, I started running because my kids got into middle school cross country and then also around that same time, I was going on the, the Disney cruise with my sister. And I was like, well, there's a Castaway 5K that I probably should at least kind of train for. So it's not a shock to my system to do three miles. So, um, but he uh, grew up um, in high mountain region of Southern California. So he was um, going out to Big Bear Lake. And there's a big trail that goes around this lake. And uh, he's like, you know for whatever reason, and he calls it, um, that it was just, it was a, a little desire that God put on his heart that he's just all of a sudden just wanted to run around the lake, wanted to complete that, that loop. Um, and his dad said that he'd do it with them. And, uh, you know, he obviously being young, uh, underestimated what that was going to be like. So the, the trail around Big Bear Lake was 15 miles, so his first time out he did over a half, uh, over a half marathon, and they took breaks, of course, because, you know, neither him or his father really were in probably, like, prime shape to do 15 miles, but, um, what he says in here, I hadn't heard an audible voice from God, I hadn't read anything etched in stone, I hadn't received a prophetic word, but I felt a strong pull in my heart, a passion to do something I'd never before imagined, and so it seemed important to act on my vision. It's crazy how sometimes our smallest decisions turn out to have the most significant consequences. So um, what he pulls from you know this beginning of his running story is that 
no matter how small an inkling you have, you know, in your heart or in your soul, don't be afraid to act on it because it could be God giving you a new vision for something that's going to end up being very big in your future. I mean, I've never imagined that I would ever run anything more than uh, a mile, let alone three miles, let alone a 10K, let alone a half, let alone a full, and now I'm taking on Dopey. Um, if you had told me that, when I first started just running a little bit with my kids back when they were in middle school, I've been like, okay, sure, dopey, I don't think so. The other section I wanted to share um, was him talking about how he has, uh, you know, if you know anything about Ryan Hall and Sarah Hall, they have, they have a few kids. Um, and so he has a little section here about talking about, you know, learning what it's like to be um, a dad and then how, you know, God is the ultimate father. Um, and then, you know, about giving your kids advice, he says, I've learned a lot about God as I've increasingly viewed him as the ultimate father. Jesus describes God that way when he talks about how on earth evil fathers know how to give good gifts to their kids. Therefore, how much more does God, who is in heaven, know how to give good gifts to his kids? And that's from Matthew chapter 7. As I think about how I want to grow as a good father, I realize that I am interested in what my kids are into, and I do everything I can to support and help them in their dreams and journeys. How much more must God be interested in the desires of our hearts and in our dreams, especially if he is the one who put those dreams there to begin with? I really believe that God is intensely interested in our hearts and all the desires and dreams that reside in them as he leads us to chase after them. And I really like that because I completely agree with it. Um, and I would add to that, that especially if, you know, a vision that he's given us, we, we go after it and just remember, remember that he's the one that gives us the strength and the vision to do it and to always give him, you know, give him the glory for achievements and even honor him if we, you know, don't quite make a goal, which if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that there's been several times where I haven't quite made the goal that I had set for myself, but um, we're gonna, we're gonna lean into the, the fact that I will achieve my sub five hour goal and that I will complete uh, Adobe without it being too painful. <laughs> um, but I would, what I take away from, from mile one, chapter one, is um, that if you ever get that small inkling, uh, don't be afraid to chase after it, because it could lead to something big, you know, down the road. Um, like me, taking on Dopey. So, I hope everyone had a great week one if you started training. Um, if you haven't quite started yet, uh, I hope you're having a good build up to the beginning of your training plan. So be sure to give this video a like, uh, leave me a comment, how did your first week go? Um, if you haven't started training yet, uh, when do you start? Besides any Disney races, do you have any other fall races that you'll be sprinkling in? Um, I'm realizing that I probably need to nail down the rest of what I'm wearing at Wine and Dine because that's going to sneak up on me uh, more quickly than I think. And be sure to uh, subscribe. We got um, Actually, we have a road trip coming up here in the next couple weeks, so I'll be going to an even warmer place and still trying to do dopey training. <laughs> I really, I like warm sunshine, but I definitely cannot wait until fall gets here. <laughs> Always remember that you are God's masterpiece, and I'll see you next week. My girl turned three this week. Oh, you're such a pretty three-year-old. Yeah.